tell us about the four point star model and that how it actually helps build productive relationships. Well, the four point star was discovered by a woman named Brenda Zimmerman, who was working at the time with executive teams and with boards, some nonprofit boards, some for profit boards. And what she realized was those people, very powerful, really bright and committed, would come together and rather than being more than the sum of their parts, they would be less. So you would look at the possibility of each of the people of the team and you'd say, oh, they should be really great, but they would get together and just not be able to be productive. And so she started to wonder what were the conditions that could be set by a team so that it could be generative. So that when people came together, they would be more than the sum of their parts rather than less. And she identified four characteristics they're very like what we talk about as pattern and pattern inter pattern intervention, but it's a really nice way to think about the conditions that can be in place for a generative team. And it is S-T-A-R. So S is about similarities and differences. So when a group comes together and you want them to be able to create something new, it's very important that you know what are the similarities that hold them together and what are the differences that give them energy and insight and possibility? And that you need to be explicit about what those similarities and differences are. If there are too few differences in a group, it just gets boring and dies of its own weight. You may have been in a team like that. If there are too many differences or the differences aren't clarified, then the system, the conversation can just roll around and around, talk about first about this and then that and then this other thing and nothing ever settles in. So it needs to be the right balance of similarities and differences. That's the S. The T of, st of STAR is talking and listening. That unless the members of the group are talking to each other in clear ways and listening carefully to each other, then the agents will never be able to connect to create a shared pattern. And so often if a team isn't being generative, it's because there's either too much talking and not enough listening or too much silence. People don't feel safe to talk and so they don't share the things that they need to share. So balancing talking and listening is a second way to make sure that generative teams work well together. The third is the A, authentic work. That if the team doesn't have something serious to do, they're not gonna stick around. I've worked lots with teams that have come together for a particular goal and they do that goal and they work really well together. And then when that goal is over, they don't have anything important to do. They don't want to go away because they had such a good time and they were so powerful and they really did a great job. They don't want to stop being a team, but they don't have any work to do. And before long, people begin to wander away. So it's very important that a group has a clear task oriented piece of work that they think is important, authentic work. And the fourth characteristic, the R, is a reason for being together. That that reason may be deep and based on identity and a long-term commitment, or it may be a very short-term reason. We need to come together to do this work in this place in this time. And that holds the group together so that the, the patterns can form. So similarities and differences, talking and listening, authentic work and a reason for coming together are the conditions that help a team work. Now, one of the things we often do when a team comes together is that we'll start with the reason for coming together. But if we haven't articulated the similarities and differences, and if we're not talking to each other, we can get stuck in that place and use up all our time and energy and goodwill arguing about why we're here. We tend not to do that because often the reason emerges as you set the other conditions. So you can start any place in the star that makes most sense, but you want them all to be balanced. So one of the things that we have in HSD is a really simple instrument to help individuals of a team assess where their, their star is long and where it's short, and a little handbook about ways that any team 
can strengthen the points of its star so that they can keep from getting stuck in their team, non-generative team. Now, not every team has to be generative. There are some teams that you want them to come together. They don't need to create anything new. They're just going to do their tasks and go back apart. They don't need a star. But if you want to create something new, if you want to be generative, then those four characteristics will help set the conditions for a generative team.